Hi, everybody, and welcome to the section of Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion webinar series. My name is Ann Potempa, and I'll be facilitating the talk today. Before we get started, there are just a few housekeeping items I wanted to go over. The presentation today is about 20 minutes long, and there's a 10 minutes period at the end for discussion. The purpose for these webinar series is for us to find ways to share our work and to also find ways to collaborate and work together as public health professionals and partners. The audio for this webinar should be coming through your computer or through the telephone number that was provided for you. If you have technical difficulties during the webinar, please let us know by using the question panel in your sidebar. You should have a section that looks like this on your sidebar. We'll try to respond to your questions as soon as we can. You will need a microphone on your computer or you'll need to use the telephone number provided to ask a question out loud. All questions except for those about technical difficulties should be held until the end of the presentation and then we will have more time to discuss them. To join the conversation or to ask a question, please raise your hand. We've got a picture on the slide to show how to do that. On the sidebar, you should have a yellow hand that you can press on. When that's raised, we'll start answering questions in the order they are asked. With that, I'm going to pass the microphone over to Nelly Ayala, who will be giving the presentation today. Hello, and thank you for joining us today for the webinar, Partnering with Providers to Increase Screening Rates. Our focus today is to present to you our section's effort to create and distribute public education materials focused on screenings recommended by the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. Like Ann said, my name is Nelly Ayala, and I am the Diabetes Prevention and Control Program Manager. So our focus in public health is to screen, increase screening rates, but how do we do that? Well, um, here in our section, we began by establishing a partnership whose focus was preventive screenings. Our purpose was to develop ideas by which we could increase awareness for Alaskans on preventive screenings, as well as identify barriers to preventive screenings. I'm going to describe the process by which the public education material, which from here on is, is known as, or known by some as Get Screen, was developed. How this was shared with providers and what we're doing now. I will define 10 targeted preventive screenings, describe the evidence basis for the recommendations, show examples of the products created by the work group, and review findings of the focus groups that were created, review data collected from the material created and outline next steps. So the preventive screenings project started in 2013 as goal two in the chronic disease prevention and health promotion se section strategic plan. Um, first, we started by developing a network, a network that was called the Chronic Disease Prevention Collaborative. That collaborative is comprised of Alaska public health advocates, agencies, and healthcare systems. And it was convened to strengthen linkages between public health, healthcare systems, and advocacy agencies. The goals were mainly for this, collaborative, for this collaborative to connect, coordinate, and strengthen advocacy efforts for chronic disease prevention and health promotion. Also to develop and strengthen linkages between public health advocates and healthcare system and strengthen preventive services. The collaborative appointed a work group to strengthen preventive services, which set the direction for the project. And they also created the preventive screening work group, which reviewed data and opportunities and selected 10 preventive screening tests. The 10 preventive screening tests that were selected are listed here. Um, we started with the ABCS, aspirin used to prevent heart attack and stroke, A1C blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking tobacco use, then the screenable cancers, breast cancer, cervical cancer, colorectal cancer, in addition, we also added weight status or body mass index, BMI, as well as fall prevention. The selected recommended screenings resemble, um, or you might be familiar that they resemble with the Healthy Alaskans 2020, which focuses on reduce Alaskan deaths from cancer, increase the proportion of Alaskans who are tobacco free, reduce the proportion of Alaskans who are overweight or obese, and increase the proportion of Alaskans who are physically active. Where available, the actual screening recommendations are based on those from the U.S. Preventive Service Task Force. Also, the recommendations for colorectal cancer screening include accommodations for the Alaska Native population. So what do we do during our first year? During our first year, the work group 
contacted Hayes Research to conduct focus groups with consumers to find out how we could make it easier for people to get screened. The focus group project was to determine factors that motivate and or discourage Alaskans from getting an annual physical. It took place in two areas, in Anchorage and Juneau, in October of 2013. Four focus groups took place, and the findings showed that there was confusion about what was covered by their health care benefits for those who had them. There was a strong influence by a spouse or loved one in promoting them to actually get some screening done. There was agreement over the importance of screening, screenings among the focus groups. They were enthusiastic about health fairs, and they found that inconvenience was the leading factor to not going to the doctor or not get seen. And we also found that education was needed about screenings and annual exams. So once we had this information and we got input from the collaborative, we developed and distributed printable reference materials for consumers as well as healthcare providers. Those materials were branded as Get Screened. We also included some information since education was a need via public service announcements. This is an example of a public service announcement you may be familiar with. Every spring, I like to go through my fishing gear. Wouldn't want to miss that first run of rats. Every fall, I get my silk tires put on. Don't want to be sliding around. Every January, I sign up for my PFD. Don't want to miss that check. And every year, right around my birthday, I make an appointment that's just for me. I call my doctor and I schedule my yearly checkup. Don't want any surprises. Make an annual appointment a part of your routine. Take charge of your health. Take charge of your life. So we continue with that slogan of take charge of your health, take charge of your life. And we have that in the Get Screen materials you can see here. On the left, you'll see that Get Screen as a big poster. And this is an 11 by 17, which most providers put in the provider rooms. In the middle, you see the brochure Get Screened. Behind it, also a provider resources, RAC card, which healthcare providers can use to link patients to different provider resources, as well as healthcare providers can use for various different resources. And on the right, you see the uh, two-sided Get Screen RAC card where you can see the preventive screens and the ages when, in which their screen is recommended. You can also see over here that we get created um, some RAC cards where the screening coverage was discussed and informed to different people. Um, they were focused on Alaska Care, Alaska Care Retiree, the ASCA, Medicare Part B, and Affordable Care Act. So based on this, how did we do in our second year? Well, during our second year, the work group decided to distribute guest screen materials to community health centers, tribal clinics, public health clinics, and primary care providers in private practice. This time, we contracted with Agnew Beck to co conduct key informant interviews and focus groups with primary care providers in private practice. We wanted to learn about how providers felt about the guest screen material created. And what we learned from this was that primary care providers are very hard to reach. There's receptionists and schedules, um, schedule problems which inhibit access, email may not be available, snail mail has unknown disposition, and cold calling is likely not to get you a direct contact. Providers actually said that professional meetings are the communication channel they favor. They prefer to be addressed at or contacted at professional conferences. They also felt there was a need for electronic links. Paper copy handouts are often left in the office and feel that electronic links may be more appropriate for their patients. There was a recommendation for a web page with the screen, to get screen materials for providers to use for patients. Also, they felt that the get screen materials should be shared through healthcare, made available to populations at large rather than those people who are coming in to, get, to see a provider already. So then we put together um, data and to see how we were going with our get screen material. Here we have a part of the ABCs, the A1C blood sugar screening, which is increasing, cholesterol screening, which is also increasing, and the smoking or tobacco use screening, in which we have reached the target of 85% by 2013. Uh, 2014 data will become available um, next year. Next slide. Here we see how we're doing with the 
um, screenable cancers, preventable cancers. And as you can see for breast cancer screening, cervical cancers, and collect colorectal cancer screening, we're increasing and we've met the target in 2012 for cervical cancer screening. So we still need some more data. Um, we still need to add hypertension medication and sodium questions, which will be added to the breakfast questions on high blood pressure in 2014 and 2015. We also need Alaska statewide data resources for aspirin use, body mass index, and full screening. And those are also being added to our breakfast questions in 24, for 2015. So what are we doing now? Well, now in year three, we're connecting with federally qualified health centers and public health centers. The difference this time is that we're not doing cold calling. We actually have a direct contact that we're contacting to ask them about how they like to get screen material. We continue to engage stakeholders, and that means we continue to get input from healthcare providers as well as other people in the community in regards to the get screened material. We're creating a centralized website with access to all the CDPHP educational materials. Um, in the focus group by Agnew Beck, that was one of the recommendations that we're actually following up with and creating a central web page for the material to be located in. And in 2016, we will review and revise the preventive screening material to make sure that they stay within the recommended guidelines. Our resources right now, we have the Safe and Healthy Me website uh, where we have some material available. We also have a screening website up and going, and we also have a screening printable materials website that's currently up, and we hope to add more information to this website as time goes on. So thank you for paying us, being here, with, listening to this webinar. You may contact Julia Thornes, who's with Comprehensive Cancer Control Program, myself with the Diabetes Prevention and Control Program, Janice Gray, who's with Heart Disease and Stroke Prevention, and Ampa Tempa, who's a public health specialist. Please let us know if you have any questions. We're going to unmute uh, phones at the moment, uh, so you feel free to ask questions out loud. Otherwise, you're welcome to type them in and we'll ask the, answer them as they come through. We're still unmuting, sorry. I was trying to ask a question, we'll be done. Six muscle hours, six muscle hours of study in human anatomy and physiology. Um, I hope this helps. If it doesn't, please be free to give me a call. My number. I don't see any questions coming in right now. If you have a question, feel free to raise your hand or else type it in. Questions. Looks like we don't have any questions today. I'd like to thank Nellie for her time today presenting and feel free to contact any of the people listed on that last slide for any more information. We also have these materials in house in printed format and would be happy to share them with anybody who would like them. Thank you very much for your time.